Assalamu alaikum everyone, Yasin here. I hope you guys are doing absolutely phenomenal. And today I want to talk to you guys about the Tawakkul Asbab paradigm. And I've labeled this episode how to use Tawakkul in order to make more money and how to achieve your dreams and your goals with Tawakkul. And the reason I call it that is because by the end of this episode here today, you are going to learn that although many of us may f- be familiar with the concept of tawakkul, I think that we have not properly been taught the essence of how to use it practically in real day-to-day life. And so if you stick with me by the end of this episode, I'm going to show you why exactly you are using tawakkul completely incorrectly and how to actually use it properly so that way you can not only achieve your goals and your dreams, but you can have a better relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So this origin story behind this is that over the last couple of weeks, I have been doing an audit of who I have become over the last years and why I am so strongly not able to, why I'm not able to evolve to the next level of my life that I want to. And having done some deep thinking about this, I've come to realize that over the last couple of years, I have become predominantly someone who has leaned more towards the uh, means and the tactics and the strategies and the how-to of, of achieving my goals. And I have forgotten the actual element of that which I cannot control, which is the result. And what I mean by this is that in anything in life, you try and put your effort but you don't always control the result and when I first built my initial business back in 2015 2016 I think that I had a conceptual understanding of this in that I really wouldn't cause myself any anxiety I wouldn't kind of freak myself out uh, if I didn't get a certain outcome because I knew that it was only a matter of time if I kept putting in the effort if I kept doing the things that I needed to do the outcome would eventually result in itself. What ended up happening, I think, after I had sold my first business was that the level of stress that I put on myself, I kept feeding myself and my brain the question, what's next, what's next, what's next? How do I make my next business? How do I make my next business? How do I make my next business? And this is why asking questions is actually one of the most powerful techniques really in the entire world because it's the questions that you feed your mind that your mind is going to go out and seek answers to and so when I asked myself the question of how 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 I started to my brain started to obsess over the asbab and over the means and over the outcomes and as a result I've noticed that over the last couple years I've had this underlying level of anxiety I've had this pain I've had this level of um of, of, of sadness, of really just constantly not ab- being able to turn off my brain because this level of pressure that I was putting on myself that I have to own whatever it is the outcome and the result is going to be. And nine times out of ten what I've noticed was that I wasn't even uh, putting in 100% of the effort and I was spending more time worrying about the outcome. Now over the last couple of years I've, I've really tried to become more process oriented than goal oriented. But the truth is that even that is not the real answer. What I've realized is that in life, you really can only control what it is that you put in as your effort. And the outcome and the result always isn't something that you can control. And so um, this is where the tawakkul and the asbab paradigm comes into place is because, yes, we know the hadith of Rasulullah that, uh, you know, the, the man asked him, do I tie my camel or do I just have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's, uh, my camel is going to be there. So, uh, so he told him, uh, tie your camel and then have tawakkul. And so we know this at a very preliminary level. But I think that on a practical level, whenever we are looking at this in order to achieve our goals, what I found is that majority of the time, we as Muslims, um, we're very intellectually oriented many times, we're very academically smart because of you know how our parents have emphasized academics for us, and we're always obsessing over the how. And even now when I talk to a lot of my friends and family, uh, you know, we talk about biz- different business ideas, we talk about real estate, the immediate question always comes up is how, is okay, 
that's a great idea, but how? And that underlying question, what immediately when you ask how, that already tells me that we don't practically understand this concept of tawakkul. Because the majority of the time, the how is going to reveal itself once you take the action. The how is the the, the how reveals itself after tawakkul. And so what you have to do in the beginning is you need to identify what it is that you're trying to achieve. Okay, you need to identify why it is that you are trying to achieve that, and then you need to identify who it is that you need to become in order to achieve that. Okay, so you have three things: the what, the why, and the who. And then the actual how and the when, that is not up to us. This is a huge realization that I had, is that the how and the when is not up to us. That is up to, that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal to us over the course of the journey. And so that is the aspect of tawakkul. And so when you start off, right, the asbab that you are taking is you're just taking the immediate next step that is right in front of you. And oftentimes, you don't even know what step two, three, four, or five is going to be. And you purely have to go off of faith. And this is what tawakkul at its core is. is it's having faith that it's going to work out. And you just focus on the thing that is immediately right in front of you. And this concept immediately removes anxiety. It removes any sort of nervousness. It removes any sort of fear. Because you have absolute conviction and belief that the how and the when will reveal itself. And that is the fundamental understanding of tawakkul. And so even though at a, at a basic sense, right, everyone listening to this will tell me, oh yeah, Yasin, it's obvious. You can only control what, what it is that you put your inputs on and the outputs are not uh, up to you. Okay, that's fine. I understand that you guys can understand that at a basic level. But what I find is that myself included, we always immediately go to how. And we always ask ourselves, like our brains start to question, like, okay, I want to achieve this, but how, 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 how? We always obsess over the how. And what that proves to us is that we are not fundamentally putting into practice the concept of tawakkul. Because the how and the when is answered by tawakkul. And so you need to just take the immediate right step in front of you in the faith and the assumption that it is going to work out. And then one step at a time, the path will start to reveal itself to us in how we are going to achieve that. And I think that this is fundamentally the reason why many people don't actually even take action to what it is that they want. Because it's almost like we are programmed to be able to need the how before we even go to the what. It's like we're preconditioned from uh, from school and from the way that we're uh, spoon-fed everything in our life. It's like we've become how hoarders. It's like we've become people who just want to know the how of everything. When nine times out of ten, we don't even know what is what is it that we're going to apply this how to. And so that's where we become knowledge hoarders and we just want to learn, 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 learn. And so we're learning all of these hows. Like we know these hows, but then we don't even know what we're applying it to. And so the truth is that that's not how you're going to be able to achieve what it is that you want. If you want to achieve what it is that you want, you have to first determine what is the target? What, what is exactly what it is that I'm trying to achieve? Why it is that I want that? So that way when the going gets tough, you're able to actually have clarity as to, hey, this is my why, this is why I'm pushing forward to this, and who it is that I need to become in order to achieve this. And then you go ahead and take immediate action on the step that is right in front of you. Because oftentimes that is the only step that you can see. And until you take that one step, the next step then reveals itself. But too many people that I see, and myself included for the longest time, we want the entire path to be illuminated for us before we even take that first step. And my friend, I promise you, if you are waiting for the entire path to be illuminated for you until you take that first step, then you are going to be waiting for a very, very, very long time. And so this is why I wanted to help clarify in today's episode the tawakkul and the asbab paradigm from a very practical point of view. So that way we can stop asking ourselves how and we can start to define our targets and start taking that first step. And so this is really what I wanted to share with you guys at a fundamental level. Is that, yes, we understand this concept of tawakkul conceptually, but practically it means actually taking that first step towards where it is that you want to go. And obviously you need to identify what that step is so that you can actually start taking that first step in that direction. So please, please, please 
go out this and utilize this because I think a lot of people understand that you know there is an outer game and outer work that needs to happen right like you need to do work in order to achieve your goals but there is also inner work that is absolutely critical and this is what we're talking about here when we understand that the wakul and the asbab paradigm is the inner work you need to reprogram your brain because your brain is always constantly seeking the how and every time you, uh, your brain asks how you need to say hey that's not up to me you need to talk back to it and you need to say hey that's not up to us we need to have faith we need to have the wakul and it's completely normal to have doubt because when you feed your brain this goal and this objective and this target that you want to go ahead and achieve, your brain is, what it's doing is it's searching for evidence in the past to be able to justify that this can happen in the future. And it's rightfully doing so. It wants to protect you. That's what your brain is built for. That's what Allah subhanahu wa created your brain to do is to protect you. And so your brain is searching for evidence in the past to say, okay, hey, it makes sense why we can go ahead and start a business. But if you don't have that evidence in the past and you say, okay, I'm going to start a business, your brain is going to say, whoa, 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 hey, buddy. There's no evidence that, that, that suggests that we are even capable of this. And so you're going to get yourself killed. So we better step back. And that is why it produces those anxieties. And that's why it produces that self-doubt. And so that's why it's so critical that if you're going to take that leap, that's why we call it a leap of faith. It's a leap of tawakkul. That's what I'm going to define it as from now on. It's a leap of tawakkul. That when you want to go out and do something that you have never done before, the only way that you are going to be able to expand and take that first step is to rely on that leap of tawakkul, that leap of faith. You have to take that step with the assumption that it is actually going to work or that it is actually you're going to actually figure it out along the way. Otherwise, you're never going to take that step. And that otherwise, you're, you're always going to succumb to the self-doubt that your brain is feeding you. And so that's why I want to just um, kind of document this because it's completely normal for your brain to have that self-doubt. A lot of people think that, oh, I'm feeling the self-doubt, that means that I, that I shouldn't do it. I'm not confident, that means I shouldn't do it. No, in fact, you need to go ahead and take that step because what's going to happen is when you take that small micro step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reveal in your path these small wins. You're going to notice that all of a sudden, let's say for example, you're trying to become a coach. I know that a buddy, a friend of mine, I'm helping his sister try and her open up her own uh, fitness business, and she had a lot of doubt and lack of self confidence that she could do it, right? And so I had just kept kept uh, urging her, I kept um, encouraging her to take that first step. And once she did, she got that small win. And then what you do is you take that small win and you feed it back in your brain as a confirmation, and you say, "Hey, brain, remember those self doubt? See, look, we got a small win." And so instead of focusing on what you don't have, you need to start focusing on what it is that you do have. And so every little win, like even if somebody just tells you, like let's say you're trying to become a health coach and somebody tells you like, oh, thank you, this was helpful. Take that little ounce of positive encouragement and feed it back in your brain. And then it's going to be like, oh, okay, we can do it. And then start that loop because it becomes a feedback loop. And so you need to just be able to push forward and take that leap of faith, take that leap of tawakkul so you can start to have those small wins. And as you feed those small wins back into your brain, you're going to have bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger wins. And then you're going to look back two or three months later and that's going to become your new identity. That's going to become your new reality. And then you're going to wonder, why was I ever even doubting that I could do this? And the reason being was because you actually pushed through and it always starts with the wakul and it always starts with that leap of faith in order to get to where it is that you want to go. And so that is the bottom line title of this episode. I think I started it off by calling it um, how to use the wakul to make more money, but it's really how to use the wakul to be able to overcome your anxiety. How to be able to use tawakkul in order to overcome your fear. How to use tawakkul in order to be able to get out of your comfort zone. And that is the critical linchpin concept that you and I must understand in order to be able to actually go after our goals and actually get out of our comfort zone and actually be able to grow. And so especially I know that you know, after um, when we're in our 20s, when we're in our 30s, when we're in our 40s, it becomes so much more difficult to take those risks. It becomes so much more difficult because we have all these constructs, we have all of these, um, these expectations, we have all of these things that are rely on us, right? It becomes so much more difficult to uh, try to move out of your comfort zone. But sometimes you need to, and the critical thing that is going to allow you to get there is your faith and your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is going to reveal for you the path if you just take that first step. And so go ahead and take it for what it's worth. 
take that first step and I'll talk to you guys on the next one Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh